Hey everyone, welcome to Nerding IO. I'm JD, and today we're going to be taking a look at Genesis, a physics engine that you can actually use on robotics and different AI applications. With that, let's go ahead and get started. So if you haven't seen the Genesis project yet, it's a physics engine that you can actually test different things like robotics and even AI applications or different video. Uh, so you, you, you can see here like liquid or here like three dimensional objects. And so what's really cool about this is that you can basically test things in a physics environment, right? So like we'll see an example of how these particles are going to be affected by the world and the physics around them. And what we're going to do is we're going to take some of the examples that they have and we'll actually run them locally on a Mac. And so that's a little bit more complicated than uh, just running them straight out of the box because there's a, a couple different configurations that we have to get set up. But you can see even on this how things are getting like pressed together. And with that, let's jump over to their repo and we'll uh, start getting things set up. So we're going to take a look at their docs and their repository, but there's some important things to know. So what they're trying to do is lower the barrier of entry to actually running physics and simulations for robotic research and uh, AI, AI applications. It's incredibly fast and it works across platform. We're actually going to look at what this means because even though it can run on Apple's uh, bare metal, there's some some different tweaks that you have to do to actually get this to run locally. It can also load in a wide range of robots. So the things that I found super interesting was the robot arm, a legged robot, we're going to look at a drone, and then soft robots. Soft robots are incredibly difficult, so the fact that we can actually load those types of files in, whether they be UDRF or even a STL file, is super impressive. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're actually going to go look at the installation. And we're going to see here that two things uh, are important. One, it doesn't have a visualizer on Windows. It does work on Linux and Mac. But to get this visualizer to actually work, it's a little interesting. Uh, the other piece is that you have to have PyTorch installed. And then really all you need to do is pip install. So uh, I wanted to get this in an environment, so I'm actually going to use Conda. But if you use PyTorch, you can actually go to, they have tons of different in, in installations that you can leverage. But let's go ahead and, and get started. So you have to clone the repo down. It comes with a full folder of examples, and we're going to actually look at what that means. To get our environment started, though, we need to run a Conda, and then we're creating the Genesis environment. We want it to be on Py, uh, Python 11 or 311. Uh, it has to be 3.9 or higher. We're going to activate. Then we're going to install the uh, PyTorch and every, its requirements. And then we're going to do a pip install. So I already have this installed. And I wanted to show you what actually happens if you try and run this without um, understanding how it works. Real quick, everyone, if you haven't already, please remember to like and subscribe. It helps more than you know. Also, take a look at Text Yourself, today's sponsor, which is a simple application that allows you to text yourself reminders, even set up recurring reminders, and you can even set up a randomized feature, which will randomly send you spurts of inspiration. With that, let's get back to it. So you can see right here I'm in my Genesis environment. And I'm going to go ahead and I will do one that I know I haven't tried, which is Python Tutorials SP Liquid. I'll just go ahead and hit enter. And it's trying to run, but it immediately hits this git GPU device error. And what that means is that we are not on a GPU. That's accurate. Even though we're on a Silicon Mac, we're definitely not on a, a GPU. However, they have this example of a render on Mac. So we're going to take a look at what is actually different between something like this and render. And right away we can see our init is different. 
it's also inside of a, a main function and we're going to figure out why that is so first this is this back end is letting us know what this actually needs to run on so in order to run this locally when you're not on a gpu you have to actually tell the back end explicitly that it is not a gpu because it defaults to a gpu here so we're going to say back end equals gs cpu the other important thing to note is this visualization parameter so what this is stating is that if this dash v then we have this vig viz argument that is going to be equal true by default it's false if you scroll down you can actually see this visualization has to be run in a different thread so that's incredibly important so what we can say is we can use this tool to run in a different thread and then what do we want to run we actually want to run this simulation which means that we're going to make it run for x amount of time and if it is enabled uh then we'll stop right and so those three pieces are incredibly important to get things to run so we'll try and see if we can just run the python renderer on mac and then we need our dash v and we'll go ahead and launch this cool and all it's doing is it has a robot arm that falls uh, but you could actually see the collision and you could see how the robot was bound would bounce and that's pretty interesting so now what we're going to do is we're actually going to see a couple different uh a, a couple different examples so we'll look at this liquid one i've went ahead and changed this so again we need our run simulation right so we can tell it that we're going to run this function of our scene and then if enabled, we will run it and stop. We're going to change our GPU here. We're going to add our viz parameter. And now we can see how the scene is built. So you can see the different simulations that are going on here, the amount of entities that it's going to build. And then again, we're actually running this simulation in a different thread. So let's go ahead and run this one now we do python pb and we keep our dash v it's building our components and now cool and now it's starting to load and you can actually see the components being built they're inside the bounding box and they're acting like a liquid all these different particles are acting like a liquid inside the bounding box of the world and you can actually look at different instructions keyboard instructions that you can use. So if we wanted to reset the camera, we could do that. If we wanted to record a video or take a screenshot, we could do that. Uh, F11 is not really working too well on a Mac unless you're using option uh, or function. And then we can also look at the face and the vertex. Uh, so if we turn on face, we can actually see all of the different particles and same with the vertex right very similar so now what we're going to do is we've seen how this is actually how liquid is behaving in a physics environment so we're actually going to go and look at a couple of different other ones so same kind of thing i've actually gone ahead and applied different uh the the three pieces that we need to so there's a bunch of different examples that you can go in and try this on. I wanted to show this drone one specifically because it has a pickle file. And so we're going to apply the same things, right? We need to have our CPU. We want to have our visualization parameter. We're making sure we're inside a function so that we can run this in another thread. We have our trajectory, which is actually loading the flight trajectory of the pickle file. And then we have for Mac OS, right? We are actually running this in another thread. Again, having the run sim. So let's go ahead and CD into drone. And now we will do a Python uh, fly 
dash V. All right, and now we have the flown that it, or the drone that's actually lifting off and flying to the right. Again, staying within the bounding box. And we saw that with the physics of the liquid before, we could actually add different uh, objects or different parameters that maybe would push the drone or have wind apply against it, depending on what it's trying to do with its trajectory. So this would this is a really great way to to test different robotics. Now we're going to do uh, another one, and we're going to do this go backflip. And so this actually requires a little bit more setup. Again, we need to make sure we have two functions. We have our main. We're going to have our visualization like we did before. We have to make sure that we use the CPU for the back end because that's what we are on. And then down here, again, we need to have our run in another thread as well as our run in simulator function. But there's something else. So in the instructions, it actually tells you to go to this Google Drive and download the two PT uh, files. So there's two of them. There's a double and there's a single. And we're going to see what both of those do. So if we go into our backflip, if we've noticed, there's also this parameter that says, uh, I don't know if this means experience or experiment, but the XP name is single uh, but we know that our file name is double so if we look down here all it's saying is that we are looking for that file name so if we go to our backflip um, and now what we're going to do is we're going to do python go and we can either do the XP or the, the single, um, oops, too far. And we'll go ahead and see what this does. So again, loading everything up. Cool, and now we have a robot doing a backflip. Again, I find it interesting. It's starting. You can kind of see it's it's going to the to the right a little bit. So depending on how the joints and the the physics around the robot in this world and how it lands is uh, supposed to, is surprisingly realistic, right? So now let's go and do a e double so we can see the checkpoints for this file. All right, and now oh, we've got it doing a double backflip. Again, it starts off, and you can kind of see it coming to the right and how it twists based on the physics that are being applied to the robot. Like, watch its back legs. Kind of crazy. So... I just thought this was really interesting and this is a way to get everything set up and working on the Mac. Again, it's a little little tricky, but um, you just have to, to read the docs and use the render Mac as kind of like your baseline. Make sure you have the CPU on and make sure that you're running your simulation in a different thread. Uh, love to see what you do and build and they have their API reference of how you can go through and build the scenes, the simulators. Again, you should dive into all the different tutorials that they have here from different renderings to coupling of uh, even like cloth or cubes and how those things mesh and morph. So I also wanted to show the uh, worm. So it's uh, this is an example of like soft robotics, or, or it could be applied to soft robotics, which uh, is incredibly difficult. Um, and so, again, we're going to be doing the same thing. We're going to be looking at running the sim. We're going to be adding our visualization. We've changed our init to the CPU. And then, uh, again, we have to run the simulation in another thread. So uh, this one, if you're in tutorials, you can go ahead and do Python advanced worm dash V.
And I've noticed this one's a little slower to, to load. So uh, just be patient with this. All right, and it's, it's kind of hard to even see, but it's actually moving a little bit. You can kind of see it, even like the textures in the skin and like the, the muscles expanding. All of that is being done with the, the physics engine. So you can imagine if this was a soft robot and it was trying to grip something, for instance, or maneuver around in a way that is particularly difficult for, um, for a hand or something to grab on. You can kind of expand the elasticity, the elasticity of the, the robot and operate more like a soft robotic or worm. Uh, that can kind of morph its uh, structure. And you can even see it's running into the, the bounding box uh, here. So again, incredibly difficult to do. I thought this was really cool. Um, it, uh, and yeah. All right, everyone, that's it for us today. What we went through was the Genesis project, getting it set up locally on the Mac, and then running through some of the examples. Happy nerding.